you all are here because you are a select group of people who are who who have uh, signed on to my newsletter. And the big issue this month for us, me included, because we put a lot of work in, was this. And what this is, it says chartography, five reinvented transcriptions of autumn leaves. Those of you who have talked to me in different quieter times and less adventuresome outside activity know that as while I'm some of the people whose baselines are transposed, transcribed, I guess, I've never been a, I've never been a fan of that usage. Not because it was illegal or wrong notes, but thought the transcription was not a complete story. What you got when you got those transcriptions, you got one baseline, either 12 bar blues or a 32 bar song form. That's all you got. And I explained to people who kind of get up, kind of wonder why I get so upset about that the use of my work. It is not that it's just that they asked me, that they didn't ask me to use it, or it's kind of done without the permission of the record label, that 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 chorus they took of mine in this case, or Christian McBride or Ray Brown or John Patitucci, whoever bass player's line they transcribed, it's just that line. With that line you have no reason to understand what it does there. All you have is this if you have a blues four down twelve, forty eight notes or so of a bass line. You have no idea why they picked that bass line. You have no idea why that bass line seemed to be attractive. You don't know whether that was the first take of this song or the second take. You don't know whether it was an edited bass line. You don't know if the piano player comped just the right, finally right comp, or the drums were just the right bass drum sound. All you have is this one chorus bass line. What this book is, <laughs> besides being a great physical presentation, is the following. With the help of David Barron and Leon Malson, I've picked Autumn Leaves as my sample tune. And since that was the first song that Miles Davis Quintet, 63 to 68, played every concert, the first tune. It turned out to be a perfect scientific laboratory. You had the head chemist, Miles Davis, and these four acolytes or, or assistants in this laboratory. Mr. Davis would bring in all these chemicals, we call them tunes right now, and our job was be to make these chemicals do something. No one knew exactly what they would do. We would hope they would produce <laughs> a better experiment than yesterday. So what I've done, I've taken four choruses of Autumn Leaves, which was the, always the format with this band, but that included Miles Davis, Herbie Hancock, Tony Williams, and myself. And the first choruses would be without the horn player. So here I have a perfect laboratory. I have the same song written, the same song played, five different concerts, my, uh, uh, Berlin, Miles in Berlin, Miles in the Plug Nickel, Miles in Harlem, Miles at Monterey, and Miles in Germany. The first four courses of these songs, maybe five courses in one case, and it shows you how my bass line from the first concert, Miles in Berlin, has evolved for the next five performances of this song. Also at this book, you have at the very top of each melody page a little thing called a QR code. And this QR code allows you to scan this code and hear the song that you're looking at in this page. So you can actually hear the results of my bass line. You can monitor every note. You can see why this chorus may be more exciting than this chorus because that's the result of this chorus. 
you hear how Herbie, Han, Herbie Hancock changed his voices for the third chorus of this song because he heard the second, second chorus last night was this. You can hear Tony Williams play a rhythm that I'm catching up to because I started that rhythm two courses before at the previous concert. You can hear Miles not play because he's not going sure he's not sure what I'm going to play based on what I played last night. The truth is, I'm not really sure either, but it's going to be happening, whatever it is. So, and you have this score. This is Miles in Germany. It shows you the quartet, Miles, trumpet, piano, bass, and drums, playing uh, Autumn Leaves, 10, 8, 64. And it has four choruses of us playing this song. And if you look from the first page of this book, you have a chart that tells you what each symbol in this book represents. The, the line means the rhythm was carried over. A different color change means I use this change over here, but I've developed over here. And you hear Tony Williams bass drum kind of complementing the line I set up for a previous concert. So this is what I think uh, uh, the first of, a, I hope, of an example that people who do transcriptions for lessons will buy this book because we need the money and, and they will find out that they can see that transcription has really great value in this complete transcription, not just a chorus. Uh, one of the problems, additional problems with this one chorus transcription that I've been um, an unwitting victim of, or two, is it doesn't show how I developed this line that they're playing. And if this line is written in the key of D flat, how would it sound in the key of F? Or they will tell you the student transcribed this bass line through the keys. Well, I'm not really sure there are many bass players who have the skill level to transcribe through the keys any one chorus of my bass line. And I'm not sure that's what necessary to make bass lines great, whether the line is transcribable, if you don't understand what's beneath it. What chord makes this work? What drum sound rhythm allows this bass line to be just like this? And this book is what I call the perfect transcription etude. It shows you, and you can hear through the QR code what the band is playing as you are reading through the score of my bass line. I'd like to think that it would be a boon to jazz bass teachers who are looking for a way to have their students understand bass line development and be able to show them how bass line evolves for, in this case, uh, five courses, four or five courses, of the same song with the same band on a nightly basis. I think I couldn't find a better way to have them understand that this line I started in April of 2063 has played again that fall of that year has taken this kind of life now and the band is what understanding that this guy back here is no longer behind the palm tree, but he's part of the band too. And they're trusting my judgment that once I have an ideal goal, I'm going to try to see how much can I get out of this line? How can I develop it? How can I evolve this line so that the band not only expects this involvement, in involvement, but they will be a part of the results of me playing this line for the same tune that we know is coming every concert, the first concert for the next five years. Uh, you know, it sounds really complicated, but I've kind of passed this book around to some of my friends who been kind of astonished at the amount of work it took to make this really slick presentation, uh, how accurate it is, and that they can actually hear what we're playing with the QR code at the top of each page for the specific location. Uh, it's, it's really an amazing event that science has allowed, has allowed us to do, and I must admit my friends have picked me like this and drugged me into the 21st century, kicking and screaming all the way. And uh, while I didn't fight them, I was not going without kicking and screaming quietly. 
I'm glad I shut, shut up and followed my instincts as they were paying me to do, and we got this project done. It's really nice. It's one of a kind, and I'd like to think that it will be a, an excellent thing for especially piano players and junior high school bands who got to, to teach a bass player how to play. This takes him off the hook. This allows him to watch a bass player grow in his band and have his bass player be responsible for making the rhythm section of these high school bands have a power to the action. 